Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another What Would You Change podcast. We are the Super Monkey Fighters. I am Loki, here with Papa Nugget and Monkey Feathers. How's it going? Hello. Great. We're reviewing the movie Tenet, uh, the 2020 Christopher Nolan movie. The blurb on it is armed with only one word, Tenet, and fighting for the survival of the entire world. A protagonist journeys through a twilight world of international espionage on a mission that will unfold in something beyond real time. Written and directed by Christopher Nolan, uh, stars John David Washington, Robert Pattinson, Elizabeth Debicki, Kenneth Branagh is his name. I'm sorry, the uh, credits, or the cast is laid out in an interesting order. There he is, right in the middle. There's probably a bunch of other people in here that you should know, uh, but it's a weird movie. So what did you guys like? I like their ambition with the film. Good way to put it. (laughs) That's something that I would agree with. It felt very ambitious. Um, And I mean, I did, I did overall like the concept of it. And I would say one of the things that really stood out to me was how scenes interact or how both present and past interacted with each other, how I guess scenes were shot. It was very fascinating to me to watch as scenes were unfolding. Yeah, I I, I liked the uh, ambitious concept. I did actually appreciate that it wasn't an ambitious over the top visual style that they kind of kept that a little bit more muted, a little bit more low key. So less like inception where the world's folding in on itself. Um, and more just, this is this weird concept of time that flows forward and backwards and how that just works. And so it's not big set pieces where the world is, you know, moving backwards yeah. and all these kinds of things. There are those moments where there are, you know, strange things that don't seem right because, you know, cars are driving in weird ways, those kinds of things, but they're not the world yeah. folding in half over the top. Yeah. The thing that seemed interesting visuals, to me so. was like some of the fight scenes. It seemed almost like the way that they captured both time flowing forward and in reverse at the same time. Yeah. Like yeah. that's, that's the thing that I was like, that's pretty amazing. Like the way yeah. that they were able to do that. Yeah. And it, it, it's there and you're watching it and it just feels like that's exactly what this would be. Rather it's confusing than, to the human mind. It's confusing. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you can yeah. see that that's what's happening when, yeah. when you, you're able to piece it all together. Yeah. Well, and it was fascinating to have the one main scene that sticks out is where the protagonist is fighting his. Himself. Himself, I'm trying to think of, is it the past or the present? But that's where I get it's confusing. His, his inverted self. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But it shows it earlier in the film and he doesn't know who it is. And it shows that sequence. But then later in the film, it shows the same sequence, but from the revert, inverted, reverted self. Yeah. And it just, it was fascinating just to see how it progressed from each perspective. The same fight scene, just... Different. I don't know that one. Yeah, uh, we're, we're stuck in the likes and that one. That's that's one that will come up probably a bit more in discussion with me. Like that one didn't land as well for me. Like the first half of the movie just didn't pull me in. The second half kind of did. I was kind of interested in that a little bit more. Um, but that scene to me was just I mean, as soon as he came out and you could kind of see what was going on, I was like, OK, he's fighting himself because you guys have, it, it, we've already established that that's what this movie is about is backwards and forwards flowing time. And so it was just kind of like, yep, that's going to be him. And so nothing, you know. Will it be revealed here? Will it not? I, you know, what's, I don't know what's going on. Like, you know, um, as far as that goes, but I didn't know that he was fighting himself. And so I was just kind of like, yeah, it's whatever it's the case. And so it, like I said, it just didn't grab me as well as it should have. And then watching it when it happens again, I was kind of like, okay, that's uh, interesting to see how that's going on. And, and, you know, it's unfolding more of the story. So. Yeah. I mean, even going into it, I did suspect that it was going to be his copy, but it was still a fascinating thing to watch as you have the two scenes unfolding from the two different perspectives. Because even when he first gets inverted and he walks out into the world and how you see 
time is, it, it's weird how time is flowing or unfolding, however you want to look at it, like with the birds or where he's getting into the car and now it, he's going in reverse, but he's going forward or even with the main scene at the end where you have explosions unexploding, but then re-exploding it. It's a fascinating concept, and I wish that I understood it more, and I think that this movie is one that would require multiple watches to fully understand it, at least from my perspective. But I did find a lot of things fascinating, especially even with the sound design where you have things going in reverse, but they're not quite going in reverse. Yeah. So, so as far as sound as the design goes, because Christopher Nolan's a, a contentious uh, topic when it comes to that. I actually watched this one with the uh, subtitles on, just so we could know what was going on. I had to more just. I, I, I wish I did. That was something yeah. that I kind of I wish I had done. Um, and it, it was more than just like, oh, hey, we know it's going to be a loud. You know, vocals are, or voices are going to be quieter than explosions. It was more just. We know that people are going to be wearing masks and all of these things are intentional in their design. But I, you know, going into a movie that I know is going to be confusing, I don't want to be confused because I didn't quite understand what someone said. Um, And then you had maybe a bunch of accents layered on top of that. Yeah. To add to the mix. Accents, accents layered into masks, into explosions going off while they're talking. And just like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. And, you know, yeah, uh, I, I could get the same level of information from this movie if I watched it muted, <laughs> you know, whether this, the subtitles are on or not. So caveat, maybe do that in the future. I don't know. Yeah. And um, there was the one scene where he was going. I uh, he was uh, I can't. It, it was when he, they were in the vault uh, at the airport. I think it might have been when he was getting the tour, but like the the yeah. audio what like as he was at the the guy that was explaining walking him through it yeah. like without subtitles you would have you would never understand what he was saying towards the end yeah. because it's way too loud I, way too loud yeah and yeah. like not that, that it really mattered but it's like it's it's a thing that will pull you out of the movie right yeah. if you're sitting there, if you're, you're struggling to understand what actors are saying yeah you know, I why are time. you invested in the story uh, it's a tough one for me too to try and think of likes because it did everything well. Like it looked great. It it flowed the way that the story needed to flow. But I just didn't like. I said it took me. You know, first half of the movie, I was completely out of it. Like I feel I, like I watched. Like I, I paid attention, but I feel like I watched this movie and I was distracted by my phone the whole time. Yeah, because I started watching it and then realized like this is a movie that has to have my full attention just to yeah. even try and comprehend what is going on. Yeah. And yeah. so I stopped it and rewatched or started it again later when I had yeah. the ability uh, to focus on it. There's a lot of things that I really like uh, about Christopher Nolan that he does in that in general. And it's weird. It's like, I liked the acting, but I didn't like any of the characters. I liked the cinematography, but none of the scenes stood out to me. I liked the concept, but I'll forget it. Like it's, it's one I'll, I'll rewatch again, probably even be like, Oh, right. I have seen this. Like, because it just, nothing really stood out as unique or interesting to me. Like it just seemed run of the mill. So trying to think of likes is difficult for me. So I don't know if anybody else has, has likes. Well, I have a, I have a specific like, and it's just a scene, but I did like, Cat and her revenge against her husband. I felt that that was kind of a nice scene because the, she's playing it up. Yeah, where she's playing it up like she's her past self and she's in love with him and he's happy. But then she turns around and she's like, I can't let you die thinking you won. And yeah. she blatantly then shows the scar on her stomach where he shot her. And he realizes, oh, I'm not dealing with the past you. I'm dealing with the future you that's in the past. Yeah. And then she shoots him. But it was kind of an interesting thing to see as that unfolds because she was talking about how she, earlier in the film as she was driving back 
to the yacht and she sees a woman dive off the boat and yeah. she comments about how she was Freedom. envious of this woman who was free and not realizing that it was her diving yeah. off the boat. So it was kind of an interesting, I guess, connection loop. That was an interesting scene for me as well, too, because his plan is he needs to die. He's going to die. He has cancer, but he needs to die because he has a dead man switch. As soon as his heart stops, it blows up a bomb that seals away the secrets and then can be found in the future. I Yeah. Confusing, whatever it is. Anyway, the point is, is that the, the antagonist of the, the villain is trying to die and he's going to do it with a suicide pill that he borrowed from the CIA. And if you follow that back, it's the pill that's taken at the beginning from the protagonist. It's his suicide pill. Um, that was a fake. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, he, he, he takes, he takes his partner's suicide pill mm -hmm. and wakes up after having a coma. And he's like, wait, the suicide pills are fake. And then his boss is like, yep. And this is proof that you will do whatever it takes to, oh, to win. And so test. you can move on. You passed the test. Right. So you get to the end of the movie and the villain's plan is to take this suicide pill. That's not real. That would put him into a coma that would have. So it's like, wait, you guys actually made it higher stakes unnecessarily because if you just let him take the pill, he would have fallen into a coma and you could have just kept him on life support indefinitely. And, you know, you have all the time in the world to do whatever you need because he's not dead, but he's not active anymore. Like, yeah. So there's things like that that I've been thinking as I've been thinking back through. It's like maybe this is worthy of more viewings, but I, I just I didn't feel that off the bat. So I think uh, I think I do it also takes feel multiple. Yeah, like that's how I feel. I do also think that it's it's half the story, at least. I mean, there are some scenes where th they talk about the temporal pincer movement. Mm -hmm. So one yeah. side's moving from one forward, the other side's moving backwards, and that the entire operation is that. And this is kind of the middle point. So you're like, okay, is there going to be another tenet that kind of explains everything else, or are you just going to leave it as the mystery? Because like this, this is a thing that I did kind of appreciate. Uh, knowing Christopher Nolan and, and his uh, earlier films, especially Memento, where people always said that's the movie that plays backwards, and it's not. It's it is a linear film. It's point A, point B, point C, but it, it it's frogs. told from point A and point C towards point B. So it's two external points moving towards the middle, towards the end of the story. Um, but if you told that A, B, C, it wouldn't make sense because yeah, you know, the, the the interesting important things happen in the middle. So that's kind of what this is as well, where it's, it, it was a bit of an annoyance where all the characters keep saying, stop thinking linearly. It's like, well, no, you need to, you just need to think in different directions because it's still a straight line. It's just backwards and forwards and you can move from different points in between. So it's, uh, but to me that made it really confusing and difficult. And uh, it's one of those things where if you're not super interested in it and spending the time to dig through it all, I don't think you're going to get the full effect or benefit of the film so i'll jump into those kind of dislikes i having said the things that i do appreciate i do like the things i like about christopher nolan films is he takes a big concept that's told through amazing characters and i don't feel like the characters in this movie were given any credit or anything to really do the main character doesn't have a name he's called protagonist yeah and I'm sure, again, intentional. Like It's not an accident that they did that. that. That's something that they did. And I think that you can have a main character without a name if you actually build a character around it. But he just moves from point to point to point to point to point continually. And yeah. just accepts the reality of what he's seeing as, okay, this is, yep, there's, I, I shouldn't question any of these kinds of things. I shouldn't try and grow or, or develop as a person. I'm going to just keep moving through like it's it's, it's like why is he here why is he doing yeah. this I, you know, cause, like because he's here he's he's not upset that his cia boss had been lying to him and that everything was just a game and then you know he thought he was gonna die to protect his his team and he didn't and then he's just like all right well on to this next thing that's like world breaking world changing like yeah. Technology that doesn't exist. And he's just like, yep. Okay. That's okay. cool. <laughs> like, it, you know, it just felt exposition and not character growth. And 
I felt like that with all of the characters. They, they try to make a big point with him and Robert Pattinson where they're like, no, we've had, it's been a long, lifelong friendship, but for you, this is the beginning. For me, it's the end. Yeah. And you're like, you know, I, I, don't, I, I don't care. I, like, okay. <laughs> that, the that's end of the something movie. that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll kind of say this. That was something that I, I liked a little bit, just the idea that Robert Patton's character, Neil, he's been going back through time. And now he's at the end of his journey while yeah. the protagonist is going forward in time at the start of the journey. So, I mean, I kind of liked that scene, but even then, I do agree. Why do you yeah. care? Well, and you're like, not really invested in that. All of the sudden, soldiers show up, and you're like, wait, you guys have like a whole team, like an army behind you? And where do these people, and, and what's yeah. going on, and why they're devices to move the concept forward rather than characters that you are invested in? Which and, I think is a. F- yeah, it's what Christopher Nolan's always done. I mean, you look at Interstellar, it's like this big concept, but he uses the characters to drive that concept through. Like, it's all about the, the growth of those individuals and not. Yeah, this feels more all about the travel. mechanics and the concepts that yeah. make the, the movie interesting. Yeah. And, and even was, with Interstellar, yeah. I there were some things that for me were kind of hard to follow, but I still understood the movie. Mm-hmm. Whereas yeah. with this one, it was so hard for me to understand and follow it because things were happening and my brain is breaking because it's trying to follow each of these different concepts of, well, they're going back in time, but you're now seeing them in the reverse. And mm-hmm. it just, it was yeah. hurting my brain just to even understand what was going on. And I felt that that was. That was the biggest, biggest dislike for this is I don't necessarily need my hand held, but mm-hmm. I felt with this one, I needed a lot more hand holding than was ever even given. Yeah. And I think to me, that's that's the worst part of this is the fact that you have to watch it one time through just to be able to then go back and understand it um yeah. they did you don't it's it's almost i i hate movies where there's like oh it all comes together in the end and it all makes sense mm-hmm. in the end it's like well kind of it kind of did but you missed well, a ton of stuff because yeah. it didn't develop through the story yeah. it was just a well, smattering of things that then all kind of make sense in the end but then you have to re-watch it to then discover those things that you missed because you didn't understand what was actually happening with half of the movie. Well, it's, if you think back to interstellar, there's the, the time dilation where they're near the black hole. So time flows differently. And so every hour they spend on that one planet is seven years or something like that. And so they've been gone for decades and they come back and it's like, here's this data dump of these videos from your family. And you have that complete breakdown of Matthew McConaughey's character because he realizes everything that he's missed. And he's, he's going through an emotional journey there. Imagine if instead of that, it was, hey, it's been 30 years. And he's like, okay, great. Let's move on to the next thing. Yeah. Like, that's what this was. It was just like, oh, right. You're not a person. You're just a machine. Yeah. It's like everything robotic. else around here. It's very robotic. And it's, yeah. And it's just one of the things where it's like, I think it's easier to grasp that concept when you do have that personal connection with something. I don't care that he has a connection to the the woman. Like... Because there's, how is there a connection? He's just, it's, mm-hmm. he's got a code of ethics that they're like, oh, I need to save her because I just need to save her because I'm, I'm the good guy. Yeah. That's yeah. No. really what it is. Like, there's no reason for it other than mm-hmm. I'm the good guy. These are the bad guys. I need to stop the bad yep. guys and protect the, the innocents. Yeah. And so. kind of, kind of adding to that, I had a real hard time watching the protagonist, John David Washington. Like, I did not like his acting at all. And, the, the best I could do to put uh, figure out why he j- he just seemed very robotic and I think he just had he lacked facial expression yeah like and he was and very that's... like focused on where he was looking and he like had very minimal facial expression and then just the way he walked like it just seemed very robotic that it just did not work for me at all. Yeah, I, I, I'm not a huge fan of Kenneth Branagh. I, 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 I just don't care for what he's done. Like, he's 
he doesn't stand out to me in any way. He, he does have talent. He is uh, skilled at what he does, but I just, he doesn't, I just don't have strong feelings either way. It's like, I just really don't care and, and those kinds of things. But he was kind of the better performance out of all of these, I think. Like, he was the villain, which he does quite a bit. Uh, or monologues quite a bit. And so he was the one who was given those scenes and he's the only one who felt like, felt like an actual person and everybody else felt like they were just robots. And I think Robert Pattinson was that way as well. I've, I've always thought that and people have been trying to say, well, no, he's, he's grown and he's done all these great character pieces, but I felt like he was the same kind of thing as John David Washington. Like you're just there reading your lines, not yeah. acting. Like you don't feel like you're this person. You feel like you're. Yeah. He took me out of the movie. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because it makes me wonder if that's a director's choice to say, act this way and be like this. Cause this is kind of the character I want you to be, or is it more the actor who's taking the liberty to interpret the character or the script or, you know, things like that I mean, yeah, to be I that. I think so. it's a mix. Like, I don't think anything in this was accidental or just like, oh, yeah, let's just do it. This one, I think it was intentional because I think they were trying to build a film about the concept and they didn't really want there to be memorable characters in it. I yeah. think it was they wanted the, the idea to be the thing that stood out the most. Another thing that, unra you know, loose ends, the <laughs> they're they're time heist, whatever it was with the airport thing where they were dumping gold onto the runway as a distraction. And mm -hmm. the one dude puts the, a bar in his pocket and, you know, yeah. What I want to know more about that. that. Like, Cause like, yeah, I thought that was, was going to, something was going to happen. He was, like there was a point of showing yeah, that, but he wasn't a character that was anything. He was just yeah. hired help. Right. And so it was like, Oh, Hey, show that he's stealing this thing and away he goes into the night and you never see him again. Yeah. That like, was weird. Okay. I, I wanted to know more as well, because it's like, why, why are you taking the time to show me this? And then that's it. Didn't it come back around to where the villain finds out that he stole the bar and he beats the guy's head in with that gold bar? No, that's something else entirely. Oh, geez. yeah. I yeah. was wondering okay. that, too. And they were like uh -huh. different gold bars, like those ones are flatter. Yeah. And that was like yeah. they were un own. completely unmarked and they were. Oh, yeah, they were things that were found in uh, the secret Russian nuclear city. Like, uh -huh. And I thought it was going to be, you know, the classic like, oh, he got greedy and so he's going to die somehow. We're going to see that, right? Like that's yeah. the classic. He's like he's going to he's going to get caught and it's going to yeah. come off, you know, in the reverse time, the reverse flow sequence where they're like, oh, hey, wait a minute. We need to stop that guy from doing that thing because it causes some other kind of a hiccup later mm -hmm. on. That's. You know, but no, it's just there. And in a movie where you're trying to figure things out, you're hyper aware of those kinds of things. Yeah. You're looking for all those little details. And, you know, maybe it's there as a red herring. I don't know. It's just, it's one of those things where it's like, I just, I don't, I, I want to, I, I want an enjoyable experience. I don't want to have to try and figure out these high concepts as I go through it. And like, I, I, I enjoy the high concepts, but I want to enjoy learning about them or understanding them rather than just being like, Oh, Hey, yep. Okay, great. Time flows backwards. Great. Let's not discuss that any further than we really need to. And just understand that like I can make a bullet fly into my hand off the table, but only if I've dropped it first, but he didn't, he just it's, thought about it. It's, it's well, but he did because he, he tries well, that and he, it doesn't work. And then she says, drop it. You have to have dropped it first. And then he drops right. it and then he can make it move forward and backwards in time and it's like wait what that doesn't yeah. that's not how anything else works in this i think so the way that i kind of saw that bullet drops the him picking up the bullet but you have to drop it first i think it was more him imitating the action of reverse because they're in a forward moving time but i think the glove itself was, was it the glove or inverted was it the bullet the bullet was i inverted. think the bullet was in well, so but he was but they also made him. They also kind of emphasized the glove that he was wearing, so I'm thinking that maybe the glove was also inverted. Again, oh, yeah. it's hard to know. And that but was, I think it was the action. But either way, of like if him that's the case, reverting it and then holding it 
which you, made the bullet then decide, oh, you dropped me, and so now you're catching me in forward yeah. moving time. Yeah. So, and, but it's yeah, it's shooting. hard it's hard to grasp. Yeah, but that was the like, scene okay. that was supposed to explain everything, right? Yeah, and it just made things and more confusing. Else, well, yeah, and nothing else works like that. Once they get out there, it's like, no, you're moving backwards, and everything else is moving forwards. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you can move things forwards and backwards. But in that scene, you can, and so because that bullet was in an inverted state. Yeah, but you but were controlling inverted, it from a non-inverted state. But the other times they went inverted and they were controlling themselves in that inverted state. Yes. It's. And so. Yeah. Uh, Confused yet, audience? The the bullet exists inverted and forward because that's what happens when a person is inverted. They both go through the turnstile at the same time and move in different directions. So that bullet exists somewhere else as well, because it also brings up the well, if you if you touch yourself, that's why we need protective suits, because if you touch yourself, it's annihilation. It's like, well. Yeah. Too much concept, too much thinking, less explanation. And it, it gets down to the one. As soon as there's questions, it's like, Shh, don't we're, we're moving on to the next scene. Yeah, like, we're, we're done. And so um, which is, is very much what it is. Like, I don't like Christopher Nolan's move towards everything's a, a play. Everything's a movie because Inception was that way. You know, characters were there was the director, there was the actors, there were the producers like the, the, the characters in the film are those they, they're filling those roles. But it's not pushed in your face. It's just that's the way it's structured. And so when you think about it, when you look at it, you're like, oh, right. This is the the, the guy putting everything together. So he's the producer. This is the director. He's because he's driving all the, the everything that's happening. This is the stunt coordinator. This is the you know, all those kinds of things where this was literally this is the protagonist in our story. Like this is the antagonist. This is the you know, it's like why not make all of the, everybody else like secondary character instead of giving them names or, you know, uh, supporting actor or those kinds of things. Like just why, why push that to the forefront as much as it is? It's tough. Cause I, it's like, I don't feel like I feel like everything was intentional. Like I wouldn't have changed because you know, it, it, they did it with purpose, but I do think that just spending a little bit more time developing the characters and my wife was fine with it. She's like, no, I think that fits. And that makes sense. Especially with CIA is it's how she said it. Like you need to make a decision and move. Otherwise you die. You know, all those yeah. Cases. And so you're, you're less, you're trying to just get information out and move rather than do those kinds of things. It's like, I get it, but. But I the CIA is all about movie, like interpersonal in and, skills and manipulation yeah. and, when there yeah. was none of and that, so it was all just action. And I want to feel invested in the people. And I think that's what a lot of espionage films have generally been about is more, you know, the people become interested in what's going on more. They make a connection. That's the biggest thing I would change is just spend a, spend 10 minutes in your two and a half hour movie developing characters. So, you know, making me feel about these people like, Hey, this bad guy is going to potentially destroy the past, but the future will still exist. Just moving the other direction. Okay, I don't, I don't care if he succeeds or if he fails. Well, and even the idea behind it, like, oh, I'm dying of cancer, so now I have to go out through this big scheme of blowing up the whole world just because. Well, how did she, how did his wife phrase it? Like, if I can't have her. No one no can. One can. He, he, yeah, he says that to her. Well, he I says that to her, no but can, it's also but the idea of if I can't live on this earth, no one can. No one can. Yeah. And yeah. that's exactly what it is. And it's, yeah. Like, he's the one that you kind of feel the most for because they spend time developing him. Right. The biggest thing for me would be let's like. Like how cool concepts are and everything like. Don't expect your audience is going to want to invest countless hours trying to figure this out. Like, like just give, give, give us a little more leeway and explain things like you're telling a story. You're not hiding a story from us, hoping we'll figure it out, you know? Yeah. Um, so I wish they would have just explained things more um, and hid less from us that probably didn't need to be hidden. I'm not saying they had to 
spell everything out, but like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to feel utterly confused after the end of a two and a half hour movie and feel like I kind of got some of it. I completely agree. That's the one big thing that I would change is spending two and a half hours trying to understand a movie and then maybe, maybe understanding things. But even then, watching it through, I had to go back to some scenes just to maybe try and understand some connections. But am I fully understanding connections? Maybe, but maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. And it just... Even having this conversation, which is what I knew was going to happen, my brain is hurting. I get that we are in the belief that, or I should say most people are in the belief that time moves in a, in a straight line, forward yeah. straight line, it's how it goes. And so you disrupt that timeline, it's gone. But yeah. then you create and paradoxes and then you create yeah, different and This one, this one tries to, to Just, work around that where it's like, no, it's all causality. You can interact with it. You're just interacting with its entropy in a different way. So it has to have happened. That's why you both come in and out of the turn at the same point in time. Like, and so you can interact with things in the past because you've interacted with them. It's like, but which one happened have, first? Which, which one happened first? Do they, they're happening simultaneously, of course. And so choice and free will all come within that. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. To me, it seems like either they're leaving too much open because they don't know how to explain it or they're leaving it open because they don't want to explain it. But either way, they leave yeah. too much open and it's like, like I'm fine with leaving things open and not explaining everything, yeah. but it's like they explain 10% and left 90% ambiguous i don't i don't need to watch your movie to make up my own yeah, movie exactly i guess we'll leave you there or we'll start there i don't know maybe if you play this backwards it'll have a whole down, new meaning down. maybe yeah, do, it. Don't, don't do it down. maybe it'll be satanic messages but only coming from probably one side of the screen um either way let us know what you thought about tenet if you saw it uh, tell us what your favorite Christopher Nolan movie is. Uh, tell us why. I don't know. Just explain it to us. It, 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 essays. I want essays in the comments. Tell us how we're done. Like, explain <laughs> us down below um, what the movie was about, what we got wrong, what we got right. Uh, discuss. Let us know. Tell us what we should watch next. And uh, I will lose my voice before we end this. So uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios. See ya.